the NSC5 journey. We're going to continue with the last section of the system settings for the 40 Manager. As always, if you wanted to contact me, you can do that via here, via YouTube, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Where are we? We're the last video within the second section of the 40 Manager, the system settings. The previous video we talked about the admin profiles and the types of administrator profiles you can create and creating the administrator accounts themselves along with the centralized authentication methods. In this video we're going to discuss a bit more about concurrent ADOM access and how you can lock down the ADOM using workflow methods. So let's get started. So the problem we got with our ADOM access is if we have multiple engineers, by default they can all log on and make changes at the same time. The problem with that is it can cause conflicts. If an engineer logs in and goes to a particular ADOM to maybe modify a policy or change a particular VLAN, there's nothing stopping another engineer at the same time to maybe delete that VLAN or change it to something else. And we need some sort of method to resolve this. Now there are a few ways to do it and we're going to go through what methods we have at our disposal and how we can enable, the, enable them and configure them within the 40 Manager. Uh, personally I don't understand why this isn't a default within the 40 Manager but I'm sure there might be an underlying reason for that. The first of these methods is the workspace mode. The workspace mode is the standard method. It essentially allows us to lock an ADOM before we want to make any changes to that ADOM. So as an engineer, I would log on to the 40 manager. I would lock that ADOM down. Once the ADOM is locked, it will show as locked to other engineers and no other engineers can log on whilst I've locked that ADOM. I will make the changes that I require and once I'm happy and they've been applied to the 40 gate, I would then have to unlock the ADOM to free it up for another engineer to make changes. This particular change, the workspace mode, can only be done via the CLI. What we do is we'll log into the CLI of the 40 manager and we'll enable it and then we're going to log into the GUI and have a look at what changes and effects that has. Okay here we are, we're actually just logging into the 40 manager. Once logged in, we're going to go to the configuration system global. We're going to set the workspace mode. If we question mark, we have a few options. We have disabled, which is the default. We have normal, which is what we're going to configure now. And we have something called workflow, which we'll pick up a bit later in the lesson. Once it's been set, we're going to end. OK, now here we are back to the GUI of the 40 manager. We're going to log on using my credentials. Now you'll notice at the top left hand corner we've got this new button, the lock ADOM. Now earlier we created the test1 ADOM. Now if I was an engineer and I wanted to modify this particular ADOM, what I'll need to do first is actually lock it. Once it's locked, it becomes green to say that I've locked it. To anyone else, it would show as red to show that another engineer has locked it. And if I was to unlock it, I would simply press the unlock button again and it is free. During that locked phase, only I can make changes to that device. No one else can. And you can see up here, it says it was locked by the admin. Once the engineer has locked the ADOM and he's made the required changes, what you will need to do is save those changes before you go ahead and install them onto the device. In our next section, I want to talk about the workflows mode. We've already had a discussion around normal mode, which introduces a method of locking an ADOM to combat concurrent ADOM access, whereby multiple administrators could log on to the particular ADOM and make the change at the same time. The workflow element builds further onto that method. So the locking element is still there, great. However, what this allows the 40 manager to control is whether or not that particular person locking that ADOM is allowed to approve and make those changes or whether it requires a senior engineer 
or the service provider to approve and reject or check those changes before they're actually applied to the device. It's applied on the 40 manager via the CLI just like the normal mode. Instead we use the keyword workflow instead of normal within the set workspace dash mode underneath the config system global command and we're going to jump into the CLI of the 40 manager and make that change. Once we switch it to the workflow we need to have a think about our permissions who do we want to actually create these sessions and further to that who do we want to approve those sessions can someone approve it for themselves or does it require a senior or a service provider to be approved now there are two elements to this not only do we have to make sure our admin profiles have the right permissions to create those sessions we need to make sure that if we're going down the route of workflows every ADOM has a admin or a senior engineer to approve otherwise you can't create those sessions so what we're going to do is jump into the 40 manager first the CLI and get the mode enabled and set the permissions and then into the GUI and we'll create some okay here we are into the CLI of the 40 manager and we're going to enable the workflow mode within the workspaces so the way to do this we're going to go into the config system global I'm going to say set workspace dash mode. Normally we have the normal mode which will enable us to lock the session before we make the changes. However, in this instance we're going to go with the workflow mode. Sometimes you'll get a warning message depending on which mode the 40 manager is in. The warning message will come up advising if you were to make the change to the uh, workspace it may kick out users that are logged into it so in a production environment you're normally going to have some sort of change control in place or engineers to be aware that you're going to make these changes so they don't lose any configuration once it's changed to the workflow mode we need to think about the permissions and how those permissions are going to look who are going to be able, who's actually able to approve the changes that we want to put forward and we need to do this based on administrative profiles so for example if we look at the config system admin profile edit and look at the list of profiles you can see we have the standard profiles and two new ones that I've created at the bottom Bob's profile is one I created offline and essentially it's applied to our user Bob the Bob's profile only allows them or allows him to view the policy tab I've taken away device management the 40 guard tab and the system settings okay remember in our scenario Bob is a user an admin user within the ADOM test okay so what I've done is I've said to Bob that he can have access to create his own policies maybe he wants to block particular IPs allow particular protocols so his his access has been locked down to to what he requires so we're going to edit Bob and uh, <clears throat> we're going to set his workflow approve to read dash write now what this will allow Bob to do is to log in to the 40 manager and to create a session within that session he may want to add as many policies as many objects address or security profiles as you would like once he's happy with the changes, he can save those changes. Once they're saved, they actually get automatically emailed to an administrator, whether that's the supplier or whether it's someone higher up within the test company that we put together. And they will need to review and approve or reject or delete the changes that Bob has proposed onto the 40 gate before those changes can be installed. So what we're going to do now is going to log into the 40 manager and we're going to have a look at creating some changes and then logging in as the admin account and then approving those changes. Okay, so here we are back at the GUI and we're actually going to log on with Bob. So once we log in with Bob, first of all you'll notice that the display is a little bit different. He only has the policy and objects, like I explained. His profile has been locked down so he only has visibility of 
that object within this ADOM. So if Bob wants to make a change now, he would go to session, session list, and straight away you'll see we have an error. And the error is basically advising us you can't make any changes to this particular ADOM because there's no one set up to approve it. So what we're going to need to do first is set that up. So let's log out and let's log in with the admin credentials. To set up an approver, what we're going to do is go to the system settings and you'll notice under admin there's a new section called workflow approval. And this is being created once we enabled the workflows. We're going to create new. What particular ADOM are we interested in? We're interested in test one. Who do we want to approve it? In this case, we're going to allow the admin. You can also set up to send email notifications to a particular email address using a email server that you've created on this 40 manager. Let's click OK there. If you wanted to create an email server, pretty straightforward. Under the advanced, within the system settings, there's the mail server. If we click this, click new, we put in the simple mail transfer server name, the mail server, the port, and whether it requires authentication. Once that's been populated, we can actually go back into the workflow approver, go within the account here, and add it as a drop down. For now, we're not going to bother with that. What this will essentially do is when Bob or someone makes a change to the ADOM test one, the approver, in this case admin, will get an email notification to advise a change is outstanding. So now we've set up that, what we're going to do is log out and we're going to log back in as Bob and then we're going to go ahead and create some random change on the policies. So now what you'll find is when I go up to create a session, I shouldn't receive that error because an approver has been set up. So there you go. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> would help if you lock the ADOM. So previously, as I said, you have to lock the ADOM before changes can be made. In this case, it's smart enough to know that once we lock it, we're obviously going to make some sort of change and it wants us to create a new session. So let's create a session. Let's give it some sort of identification. Here for example, we can maybe put in a change control number so it's easy to track the change. Um, and maybe you have sort of internal uh, system processes that you follow that require the changes to be tracked. For now, let's just pretend we do, and the changing controls 5589. The comments is a new policy for protocol X. Let's press OK. Now what we have is something very similar to the 40 gates, is essentially these are the policies that have been created. So we just have deny or any any's. That are just the default ones put in there. So I'm going to click on the policy, and we're going to create a new policy and we're just going to put in anything we want here. So I'm just going to change this to accept, maybe change the service to BGP, and then just pop OK. Add it to the bottom, it's no good to us, so I'm going to move it up one more. Or just move that one down, there you go, that seemed to have done the trick. And once we're happy with it, we can save our work. Saving it allows us to come back at a later date and continue. Now it's important to know that no changes that you make here are actually pushed to the device until they're approved and installed. So once we're happy and we've made all the changes, we can submit it. We can send a message to the person that's going to be submitting or reviewing the changes. And now if we had the, the uh, automation set up at this point, the person who actually approves the changes for the ADOM test one would get notified. So let's say we did. We got a notification. We're the admin, so we log on. And our customer within the ADOM test wants to make a change. We've had the notification, so we've logged in and we click on test one. We're going to go across to the policy and objects tab. Now you'll notice that we can't see the changes here, 
because none of them have proved this is actually in life this is in production so what we're going to do is we're going to lock it and then as soon as we lock it you'll notice straight here we've had the changing control we need some information from Bob and the time and dates and if we right click we can view the changes that Bob's put forward we can look at the details of the change that he's put forward and we can download a copy maybe for your records and we have the option to approve, reject or discard I can approve it and send a message, plan, uh, send a message back saying um, this is fine please install hit OK on that and now that change control has been approved and you can see again on the back is updated but yet to be installed and if it's not installed it's not on the device so either I can install it using the install wizard and put it onto the device or at this point Bob also has the ability to log in and install it himself to review for the lesson we talked about concurrent ADOM access and why it's a bad thing to not have any locking mechanism in place because you can't stop other engineers from logging on and making changes at the same time as another we've talked about the two different options that we have to combat this we've talked about the workspace normal mode and the workflow normal introducing a locking mechanism whereas the workflow introduces that locking mechanism and a way to approve, reject and audit the changes. We looked into actually configuring both workspaces, both normal and the workflow. We then went in with Bob and we created some changes and then went in with the admin to approve them. We went into the CLI and assigned the permissions that were required for Bob to make those changes within the 40 manager for them to be approved in the first place and then we looked about assigning the approvers to the particular ADOM allowing the admin user to approve the changes that Bob has put forward for his change control I hope this lesson has been informative I'd like to thank you for viewing and if it has been please do like and subscribe